Hello curious minds, it's already the third Tuesday of the month, and you know what that means, let's take a look at what you can see in July's night sky, and trust us, it's a packed month, let's dive right in. Let's start with the moon, our faithful companion in the night sky. First quarter lands on July 2nd, a perfect time to grab binoculars or a telescope. Shadows along the lunar terminator highlight craters and mountains in awesome detail. Then comes the full moon on July 10th. This full moon in July is called the Buck Moon. It gets its name from Native American and colonial traditions. This is the time of year when male deer or bucks begin to grow their new antlers. But it's also known as the Thunder Moon in some cultures, because this is the month when summer thunderstorms were most frequent, rumbling through the night sky. These thunderstorms were vital for the crops and life cycles of many indigenous peoples. This full moon rises in the constellation Sagittarius, and it'll appear full not just on the 10th but also the night before and after. On July 18th we hit the third quarter, another good chance to observe lunar features. And we wrap it up with a new moon on July 24th, a perfect night for stargazing. But that's not all. The moon hits two important points in its journey around Earth this month. On July 5th it reaches Apogee, the farthest point from Earth. And on July 20th, it swings in close at Perigee, appearing just a bit larger and brighter in the sky. Now for the major celestial events of July, and this month is a meteor shower extravaganza. We've got four active showers lighting up the skies, some bright, some faint, and all worth a look. First up, the Pisces Austronids, active from July 15th to August 10th, peaking on July 28th. These meteors appear to radiate from a spot near the bright star Fomalhaut in the constellation Pisces Austrinus, the southern fish. This is a subtle shower with just around 5 meteors per hour, but if you're up before dawn under dark skies you might catch a few gentle streaks. The best viewing times will be before dawn on July 28th and after the radiant rises on July 28th. Next, the Alpha Capricornids, peaking on the night of July 29th into the 30th. Their radiant lies in the constellation Capricornus. This shower originates from debris shed by Comet 169P slash NEAT and is famous for its bright fireballs, even though it only produces a few meteors per hour. The moon will be 27% illuminated so it won't wash out the show. A great opportunity to see something dramatic. The third big event is the Southern Delta Aquarians, peaking on the night of July 30th into the 31st. It's one of the more prolific showers this month with up to 25 meteors per hour under dark skies. These meteors radiate from the constellation Aquarius. This one favors Southern Hemisphere viewers, but anyone with a dark sky and a little patience can enjoy it. Look up around 2 a.m. local time, when the radiant is highest, and the moon, just under half full, will set before peak time so conditions are looking good. And while it's not quite time for the main peak, here's your friendly early alert. The Perseids begin ramping up on July 14th, with a few early meteors streaking in by late July. These meteors originate from the famous Swift-Tuttle comet, known for producing bright, fast-moving streaks. This is the most popular meteor shower of the year, and while the peak is in August, if you're already out watching the other showers, keep your eyes open, get your blankets, find a dark spot, and give your eyes time to adjust. It's meteor season. Now let's zoom in on some of the smaller, but still spectacular, sky moments happening this July. On July 3rd, Earth reaches aphelion. Its farthest point from the sun this year will be about 1.0166 AU away, which is roughly 3% farther than in January. Does it make our summer cooler? Not really. Seasons are caused by the tilt of Earth's axis, not our distance from the sun, but still, a cool cosmic milestone. On July 4th, Mercury reaches its greatest western elongation, sitting nearly 26 degrees from the sun in the morning sky. This is the best time to see Mercury all month, look low in the eastern sky just before sunrise. That same morning, Venus and Uranus will have a close encounter, about 2 degrees apart in the constellation Taurus. You'll easily spot Venus with the naked eye. It's blazing at magnitude minus 4.1. To see Uranus, grab a pair of binoculars, and you might just catch it nearby. On July 16th, the moon cozies up to two gas giants. It passes within 3 degrees of Saturn, and just a bit over 2 degrees from Neptune, all in the early morning sky in Pisces. Saturn will be visible to the naked eye. Neptune? That one's a telescope target. 
On July 20th, a lovely sight. A 24% illuminated moon will glide just 0.4 degrees from the Pleiades, the iconic Seven Sisters. Visible in the pre-dawn sky, this is a beautiful target for binoculars or wide-field astrophotography. On July 22nd, we get a triple treat. A slim crescent moon, Venus, Jupiter, and the red star Aldebaran will cluster together in the eastern sky before sunrise. No telescope needed, just a clear view of the horizon and maybe a coffee in hand. On July 23rd, the 3% crescent moon meets up with Jupiter in the early morning they'll be just under 5 degrees apart. Another lovely moment before dawn. And finally, a dramatic exit. On July 28th, the moon passes in front of Mars in a lunar occultation. This rare event will be visible from parts of Antarctica, but even if you're not in the visibility zone, the moon and Mars will appear close in the sky, right on the border of Leo and Virgo. Binoculars will enhance the view, and if you're lucky with timing and location, you'll see Mars disappear behind the moon. From Mercury's morning show to a disappearing Mars, July's minor events are anything but boring. Before you head out to chase meteors or spot those planetary pairings, here are a few tips to help you get the best views this July. Know your moon phases. The new moon on July 24th makes for perfect dark skies, especially for meteor showers. But around the full moon on July 10th, its brightness will drown out faint objects, so plan accordingly. City lights can wash out all but the brightest stars and meteors. If you can, drive out to a darker area or find a local dark sky park or rural spot. Give your eyes at least 20 minutes to adjust to the dark and avoid looking at your phone. Use a red light flashlight if you need to check charts or settings. You don't need fancy gear. Some events, like meteor showers and planetary conjunctions, are best with just your eyes. But if you've got binoculars or a small telescope, take them along. They'll help with planets, the moon, or catching Uranus or Neptune. Don't forget the basics. Bring a blanket or reclining chair, dress for the cooler nighttime air, and maybe pack some snacks and warm drinks. Meteor watching takes patience, but it's also peaceful. Apps can help you find what's up and where. Or just print a simple star map to guide your evening. And one quick safety reminder. Never use binoculars or a telescope to look near the sun. Even during sunrise or sunset, the concentrated light can cause permanent eye damage. Always double-check where the sun is before pointing any optical gear skyward. Stargazing is best with company, so grab a friend, look up, and enjoy the show. Clear skies, and happy stargazing. So Jules Sky is packed with wonderful events. Which one are you most excited to see? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this guide, don't forget to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell, so you never miss a moment of what's happening above. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep looking up.